two questions. Uh, your name is Lisa Andreas or Lisa Porter? Both. So um, my singer name is Lisa Andreas, but I got married. So my married name is Lisa Porter. So, yeah. And you are located in uh, Tucson, Arizona? Yes. Oh my God, and it's eight o'clock in the morning? Yes, it's very early here, yeah. Oh my God, you woke up for me? I did, of course. <laughs> yeah. Wow, okay, okay. Um, but we want to know, 17 years ago, how was the feeling for you going on stage? It was incredible. There is... I, to this, I've done a lot of gigs and I've done some big stadiums and I've performed to a lot of people, but there was nothing like walking down those stairs, taking the moment to get ready for the for the song to start. And I could hear people, I could hear people singing the beginning of the song in the stadium and just that, that feeling of, oh my goodness, like trying to be present, trying to be professional, trying to do the song and at the same time just trying to soak it all in like there was just nothing like it it was unbelievable yeah did you, did you have any stress at all because we didn't notice anything we didn't notice uh, anything <laughs> yes um so i actually had laryngitis the first week yes. I was there. Yeah. um so i had completely lost my voice so that was a little stressful um but we figured it out we like adapted the song and then we just stormed through and everyone was so sweet and so kind that it really didn't make it like any difference. So all I could do was my best for the performance and then getting into the final just made it even more, like even more exciting. And I was like, okay, that's fine. I'm just, I'm just going to get through it. I'm going to get through with my voice and it worked. So yeah. Yes, it perfectly worked. But, but besides going as Lisa to compete on stage, did you realize that you are representing uh, a special country, Cyprus, inside Istanbul? So, yes, I did realize. I did realize, but I didn't really understand until I got there. And there was such a huge media buzz, like everyone um, was like on me to kind of see like how I would feel, what my reaction would be. But I was so so welcomed um honestly I was so welcomed by everybody and they gave me extra police they gave me extra protection I had a policeman outside my door at the hotel but I, I didn't need I didn't need it I was so well taken care of and just like I really felt the love from the country to be honest with you and um somebody told me that I scored the first ever point from Turkey to Cyprus in the history of Eurovision. So I feel pleased about that. I feel like being there for me, like it made a difference. So yeah, I wanted to win. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, I wanted to win. Like that's why you go, because you wanna you wanna take home the trophy for your country. And that's I really did. I, I wanted to. And fifth was an incredible place to come. Like not many people can say that they represented their country. Not many people can say that they've come that high in a competition. And yeah, I'm, I'm super proud of coming fifth. But of course, I would have liked to have come first for Cyprus. But two places above you, it was Sakis Ruvas. Yes. Yeah. And I, I remember that there were some talks about you having a crush on Psyche's. <laughs> what was? Yes, you. Well, everyone, everyone is is having a crush with Psyche's. But um, <laughs> how was the relation between you and him? Did you oh, met? Lovely. Did you talk? Yes. yes, we did meet. We spoke. Um, we were great champions for one another. He was amazing. He was so nice and. Like you could tell that he was a star. Do you know what I mean? Like you could tell that he was well loved and um, yeah, but it didn't show. He was so kind. He was so kind and supportive and just, I don't ever remember him not smiling. Like that signature smile that he's got, he was just always wearing it. And uh, was your relation with uh, the Cypriot broadcaster okay? Everything w worked fine? Yes, they were incredible. Um, they were so supportive the entire time and I remember that we all had a meal before we left and it was it was so sweet it was it was like being part of this huge family and then when we left it was so surreal because 
I've I, I've been like caught up in the Eurovision and and at the same time I was studying for my GCSEs like backstage um and then I went home and took my exams and like everyone saw me at home and then I just slipped right back into being a teenager again and it was so weird but uh, yeah the the I've always been so welcomed by the people of Cyprus and by you know CYBC and by all of the people there Rick everyone they've still to this day play my stuff and show me support which is you you decide to re-release your amazing ballad stronger every minute yeah. why not it was Mike's idea actually he mm-hmm. We've been we've been um, in contact over the years, and last year I bumped into not last year, it was last year, I bumped into him in London. Um, just a, a freak. We were both in on the same street in London. I was just up there for the day um, when I was visiting home, and we were both like, "Oh my goodness, I can't believe I've seen you!" And it, and so we've kind of talked more since then as well. And then he just messaged me this year saying, "Do you think we should release the song?" And I was thrilled because I I just want people that love the song to be able just to click it on their phone and listen to the song whenever they want in their car and not have to go to YouTube to find the video from um, the Eurovision. I, I want them to actually just be able to, to have it. And I want them to have the instrumental so they can sing, sing along to it and, and sing their heart out. Like, I'm so excited that they're going to have that too. Yeah, we will find the song in uh, all platforms, or on all digital platforms, I guess, right? Spotify, yeah. Apple Music, and stuff. Yeah. If, uh, the, if any broadcaster comes to you and say, Lisa, we want to give you a song for your vision, would you try it again? This is a great question. Um, for many years, I said that I wouldn't because coming fifth was such a great achievement and it was so so high that I think if I'd had gone back into the competition and not done as well that I felt like I would be letting people down um but recently if it was the right song the right timing of life and the right people to go into it with I never say never you know you only live once and why not? Life's a journey and an adventure and we need more Eurovision in our lives. So, What are your comments about the Greek and the Cypriot entries this year? Well, I was watching the Cypriot entry and um, she had, like, the crowd was singing that song like they loved that song. So, I'm, I'm you know, I'm, it did well, but I, I mean... I think that song should be really up there. Um, yeah, great energy, both of them. They both had great energy. Uh, the last dance song kind of reminded me of Sakis, which was interesting because I thought, oh, how like funny that kind of this time of year um, I'm kind of re-releasing the song and then you've got that upbeat song from Grace again. So You know that behind Stefania, it, was, it, it is the same team uh, with Sakis. Oh, I didn't know. Focus Evangelinos, Elias Pocotos, they are all there. Oh, I didn't know that. How funny. I didn't know that. But yeah, it had that Sakis vibe. So yeah, I loved it. Both songs were fantastic and they're going on my playlist. So yeah. if you would uh, if you would choose the, the, the music style, the music genre that you would go um, in Eurovision again, what would that be? Would would it be an, another powerful ballad? would be something else? This is a great question. So for a long time, I thought it would be the exact opposite. I thought if I was to ever go back, because I have musical theatre training, I have dance training, um, I thought it would be so nice to show that side of me and show that I'm like versatile as an artist. Um, would people want that? I don't know. But I think I would like to do something upbeat. But I do love ballads, so... Ballads really give you an opportunity to sing. What are your plans from now on? So, keep singing. I've, I've still been singing this whole time. i still been doing events and weddings. And um, I'm also doing art, which kind of happened during the pandemic. Um, mm-hmm. Because there wasn't much performance available. So, um, 
kind of found it and it's taken off. So I'd like to marry the two. I'd like to marry art with some original songs and hopefully like people hear the stuff and they can enjoy the music and maybe download the songs that they like. You talked about uh, singing in weddings, right? Because your song for years was uh, the wedding song in many Greek weddings. Yes, I know. What an honor like to have people have my song for their wedding song, that's huge. One last question for you. What is the one thing that you will remember forever? So one of the moments was um, when I got into the stadium for the first time and I sat down and the stadium was like basically empty and they were setting up the stage and sound checking and I thought to myself, and, you know, I'm only 16, and I thought to myself, wow, like, this is the real deal. Like, I'm actually representing Cyprus in this huge stadium. Like, this is no joke. <laughs> so that was that, that, like, pivotal moment of it really being, like, next level of just career and professionalism, yeah. And then the other moment was what I mentioned earlier. And I actually, so it was that moment when I got to the bottom of the stairs and I got onto stage and the moment before the music starts and they count you in and the auditorium was singing, that was probably the first, like I didn't watch back my performance for, I, I have probably watched that performance three times total in my life because I didn't want to ruin that memory of, opening my eyes and like seeing the crowd I just wanted it to be cemented in my mind so I didn't watch my own performance back for ages um so that was probably one of the most special times and being there with my parents was huge so. amazing so ahead of your release of your re-release of stronger yeah. in it by um by Mike Conaris what is your message to every Eurovision fan that is expecting this release on June 4th? My message is to enjoy the song, um, sing your heart out, just love it, sing it to the ones that you love and that's it, yeah, just love it, please enjoy the song. <laughs> yeah, and there's, there's an English Greek version, I mean my Greek isn't the best but I, you know, I hope that that's a little homage to to people that want it in Greek and they can really enjoy it in the in the Greek version too.